a magic word this morning? It's Steve Larson. What's the magic question? Is, is it safe? Is it safe? So Steve is teaching uh, in the Pennsylvania mm -hmm. on computer science and a lot of things on hacking and, and uh, cybersecurity and the like. And he's here for a few weeks and we catch up with him. And we love to learn what he's been thinking about and teaching about um, because this is a very important topic. You know? It's not quite as, as existential as climate change, but it's right up there, mm -hmm. right up there. And We'd better, you know, it's like Mueller said, we'd better attend to it. Well, yeah. Is it safe? No, but thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had an election coming up, and mm -hmm. everybody know, everybody in the world knows that the Russians, and for that matter, copying the Russians, uh, you know, Trump has his own organization, mm -hmm. which engages in this. I, I don't have to tell you that Pars Parscal, who was the guy who was his social media, you know, manager in the mm -hmm. last election, is now his campaign manager overall. Right. So we know what kind of campaign he's going to be oh, doing. It's totally digital. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, mm -hmm. How should be, we be worried? What are the things we should be worried about? How should we be worried? What should we be worried about? Uh, we should be very worried if you're concerned with keeping democracy, true democracy in America. Um, the things we should be worried about is how they're going about influencing the voters. Um, if you Recall Trinidad and Tobago had um, some elections recently, and they used a lot of data, they used data mining to influence the voters. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with that, but... Well, that was, wasn't that a Cambridge Analytica It was a Cambridge job? Analytica job, yes. Yeah, and yeah. Cambridge Analytica was very happy to report that it was their job. In fact, they bragged about, at the time, they were influencing in about 10 um, presidential or prime ministerial elections every year at that time. So, and it's not that they came out and they said politically, you should vote for this guy or you should vote for that guy. In Trinidad and Tobago, there's basically two cultural groups, the African Toboggans and the Indian Toboggans. And what they did was they helped start a movement called Do, Do So, which I don't speak the language, but from what I understood it was to go and vote. And they put that out there and all of the young people that were just new voters were um, persuaded to not vote. However, the Indian Bobbins followed their parents more than they followed social media. And even though social media was saying don't vote, um, their parents were saying do vote. So more Indian voters voted among the young people than the African Tobogans. Which was the desired result. Which was the desired result, and they elected who they wanted to elect. Yeah, and so in, in effect, uh... Cambridge Analytica controlled that election. Exactly. I remember that was in the movie, The Great Hack. Mm -hmm. um, we had a fellow named Dave Carroll. I don't know if you know him, mm -hmm. but he's in your kind of business. Right. Somewhere in the East Coast, he teaches the stuff. Um, and then there was a woman uh, who I, I really thought was really interesting. She was a whistleblower mm -hmm. from Cambridge Analytica, relatively right. young, early 30s maybe. Kaiser. Uh, her name was um, Brittany uh, Kaiser. Kaiser. Yeah. Brittany Kaiser. Mm -hmm. And this movie, which is on Netflix right now, is a documentary right. and tells you all about how Cambridge did it. What's, what's interesting, what you and I were talking about before the show is, okay, so Cambridge Analytica, under pressure, goes bankrupt, and they disappear themselves. Mm -hmm. Every table and chair, every computer, every algorithm, every disk, it's all gone missing. Nobody knows where it is. Correct. What happened to that? What happened to the people? The people are now working for the company that took its place. You know that company just didn't disappear into thin air. Everybody still has those skills and talents, and somebody wants to use those. So somebody else hired them just under a different name. Yeah. And they did Brexit, too. Yes. Which I, you know, that's more than the Caribbean for sure. Oh, yeah. And Brexit has had and will have and is having a huge effect on Europe mm -hmm. and on Britain for that matter. And they influenced it big time. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and for example, an investigative reporter went to Wales, where she was from, and she was talking to people and they're saying, oh, well, no, we, we, don't, we don't want to be in the EU because of immigration problems and because of the, a bunch of different problems. And she never saw that on any public media. It was all on social media. And she went there and she looked at the demographics and that had the lowest um, incidence of immigration of foreigners coming in. They were worried about people from Turkey coming over um, and they had the lowest 
rate of immigration from Turkey and the whole European Union. But yet, the people following social media were influenced to think a certain way. And she talked to a couple of the young people and voters, and they said, oh, now we want to get out of the European Union because what has it done for us? What, has, what benefit have we had? And she was showing pictures. Well, there's this university that was started because the coal and the auto industry went away. The university was started because the European Union funded it. And a bunch of different organizations that were used to better the lives of the people were funded by the European Union. Yet the social media influenced them to think the European Union hasn't done anything for them. No, it's deception. It's, it's deception. disinformation. Misinformation, yes. Um, and it's, it sounds right out, out of the Russian playbook, the playbook in 2016, mm -hmm. um, the, with the uh, Internet Research Agency in Moscow, which right. spends a lot of time doing this. You know, one thing that strikes me is that the Cambridge Analytica, and we're going to take a short break. Okay. We'll be right back with Steve Larson. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock for Cannabis Chronicle, the 10,000 year odyssey, where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with cybersecurity uh, expert uh, Steve Larson, who's visiting us from Pennsylvania, where he teaches. Slippery rock. Right. Right? Anyway, uh, so Steve, you were talking during the break about this investigative journalist mm -hmm. who sort of opened, opened our eyes a little bit about, right. about the motivations. Can you repeat mm -hmm. that for the evening? Yeah, so she has a couple of TED Talks, and in those talks she's talking about how we are all worried about our privacy. Um, and I understand why, because, you know, all of your data is out there. Um, but she was saying that the corporations that do the data mining on all the data that we share on all the social media platforms and on Google searches and in our email, those are all mined and the corporations are using it as a form of power. So they are influencing elections, like we said, um, but they're also using their power to influence the making of laws um, and other things like that. So we should be very afraid that these corporations are using this data. Now, you remember the book 1984 by sure, George Orwell? Absolutely. Did you follow what they wanted you to do? Were you worried that Big Brother's watching? Yeah, well, they are. Well, Literally but now. But it's not the Big Brother we thought it was. In the book, it was the government. Now, it's all the corporations. But we are the ones giving them the data. It used to be, George Orwell said, you know, everybody was afraid that Big Brother was watching. Nowadays, people are afraid that nobody is watching them. For example, teenage kids, they're all over Instagram and Snapchat. And they're, they want more and more followers because they want to be seen, to become famous and stuff Attention. like that. Attention. Oh, yeah. They want them to have their own YouTube channel. Um, but we are giving them information that they are using against us, um, kind of like information warfare. They're using that data to influence us. For example, when I was active in the Boy Scouts about five years ago, a lot of my emails dealt with Boy Scout and scouting and camping and hiking and stuff. And a lot of the pop-up ads that I used to get were all about scouting or all about camping information or stuff like that. So they're mining this. Now, a human being might not be mining it, but they have algorithms that are mining it to find out what I should be, um, what I should be fed, so to speak. So if you look at it, in that case, you know, they're tracking everything we do on the internet, whatever clicks. Go to CNN.com. Um, last time I checked was about six months ago. There are 38 non-CNN companies tracking your activity on CNN.com. And they are tracking what, click, what links you're clicking on there, how much time you spend reading each article, what type of articles. So if you click on mostly Democratic, Democrat-leaning articles, I guess, they know that you're a Democrat. Conversely, they know whether you're Republican, and then they will have pop-up ads 
where they will say things like, and this is what Netflix is famous for, based on your preferences and what you've done in the past, here's what we think you would like to watch. So they're trying to influence what kind of information you are consuming based on what you've already consumed. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, you, so you get a little note from, I don't know, Netflix or mm -hmm. CNN says, uh, Jay, how would you like to uh, you know, do a documentary on this subject, on Trump? Yeah. Well, they know I'm interested in Trump. Right. Um, and, and I say to myself, well, that's good. You know, they know I'm interested in Trump, but I don't think we realize how, how nefarious this is. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> because they know a lot more than my interest in some political aspect. They know everything about me. They, mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like there's a consolidation of data. It it's is. not just the television or the cable. Um, it's what, where I spend my money, what I read, mm -hmm. where I go, who I talk to. Right. Um, and the whole, they got a profile on me. And what, what, what struck me out of the Cambridge Analytica movie, mm -hmm. you know, The Great Hack, we should talk more about it, um, which I wanted to bounce off you, is, uh, okay, so they got this data from Facebook primarily, mm -hmm. paid a lot of money for it. Somebody gave them the money to pay Facebook. Right. There's a lot of money. Facebook got, what, hundreds of millions mm -hmm. out of that deal. Uh, somebody had to write a check to Cambridge Analytica, right. give them that money. Okay, so now they have the data from Facebook and other places, mm -hmm. consolidated data, and they create, or maybe they got it already, maybe somebody gave them profiles on you right. and me, Steve. And they know where we go, what we do, what we think, mm -hmm. right? Um, now they want to affect us and change our thinking. Right. Um, so they got to make, uh, they use an algorithm to go through that data, you know, mm -hmm. the metadata kind of uh, analysis. And um, it's like terrorist kind of analysis. Right. Is everybody we ever talked to got our emails, mm -hmm. my goodness. Um, and, then, and then they take that and they put us in multiple categories. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing on this. Right. And the categories are, Okay, he's a, he's a Democrat, and he likes this, and he likes that. And we, we know his tastes, we know his inclinations, mm -hmm. so we can formulate messages to him that will appeal, appeal to a person with those tastes and inclinations. Right. It's very accurate. It's, it's more than, why don't you buy a widget because we know you like widgets. Mm -hmm. It's, why don't you buy a bunch of ideas and change your thinking because we know your soft points. We know what your, right. you know, your, 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 uh, your vulnerabilities are. Oh, yeah. That's what it sounds like and, to me. And Cambridge uh, was bragging that they have 5,000 bits of information about each person. I don't know 5,000 bits of information <laughs> about myself. You know, but, but they know they can track how fast you're typing in a web browser. You know, they, like when I turned on my web browser this morning, um, immediately it said, hey, you're in Waimalu, Hawaii. Here's the temperature. So they know, they know your location based on your IP address, right? Um, they know, like you said, just about everything about us. They know that I buy glasses. So of course, I get ads for glasses about once a year when you renew your glasses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if they knew your purchasing habits and, and your, your size of pants already. Um, but they know so much more than that. Oh, yeah. They know how you think. And this is, this, they don't tell us exactly mm -hmm. how much they know. Uh, in, in this movie, uh, I think it was a Dave Carroll character, real person, right. uh, went to them and he wanted to get the information he ha they had on him. Right. Um, he never got it. No, his problem was he didn't live in Europe. <laughs> Have you heard of GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation in the EU? Yeah. Where when you want the information, they have to give it to you. If you want it deleted, they have to delete it and prove that it's been deleted. Otherwise, they can get fined 4% of their, of their um, gross receipts for the year. So we don't really know the full extent of those 5,000 points of data. No. And we don't know. I mean, it would be even more difficult to figure out what kind of algorithms because they got right. really smart people, people maybe who trained in Russia, people, American kids too, mm -hmm. smart, really savvy on computers and creative and innovative and and they, they are given the problem of trying to change our minds. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you put out? And, and, um, and then targeting us right. and our little profile. It doesn't have to be, you know, five million people. It could be a, a few hundred people. Right. Uh, but it, it will have great effect because these um, algorithms they write are so effective. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's nothing to lose. Right. If they are unable to change our minds with one approach, so what? Um, go to another Flip approach. Flip switch and you get another approach, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. 
<laughs> you know, this is very scary. It's really, um, you're right, it's way worse than mm -hmm. 1984. And, and let me tell you, it's partly our fault. And I say that because when you log into a website, or the first time you go to a website, you want to join social media or something like that, one of the options it tells you is log in with Facebook, log in with Google, log in with you know, whatever else it is, Pinterest or something like that. And once you log in with that, now those two sites are connected and your Facebook can get everything about you on this other site and this site can get everything about you from Facebook. So we're, we're enabling the connecting of the dots of all the 5,000 bits of information that make up our character. If we thought about it, you right. know, I'm always troubled when it says that you can log in three, four different ways yeah. through other portal sites. Well, the portal site means they're watching what you do. Exactly. Every keystroke, everything. Exactly. Um, it's not just a matter of exposing your passwords. It's a matter of exposing your whole, your whole life. Right. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned about it in the sense that our democracy really is uh, based on a secret ballot. It's mm -hmm. also based on... The basic assumption goes back to the revolution that the electorate is well informed. Right. That the electorate has conversations, develops um, you know sound opinions. Mm -hmm. That the electorate votes uh, in accordance with its best. You know every every man and ultimately woman. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't allow women voting until the twentieth century. Right. But <clears throat> uh, you know everybody who votes is a, is a valid, you know contemplative thoughtful right. voter. Um, we don't really have that anymore. We lost that somewhere exactly. along the way. We're being fed misinformation. So we think we're making an informed decision when we vote based on what we've been fed by the media. Yeah. And somebody can control us. Right. <clears throat> so Facebook gives uh, Cambridge Analytica, Facebook and others, I'm sure to a moral certainty, it wasn't just Facebook. Oh, no. It was right. that whole corporate world you correct, described. Correct. Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica in a space that, you know, the, the photographs... Uh, in, in the movie about how big the space wasn't that big. Yeah, a few wasn't. thousand feet, it wasn't that big. Yeah. Um, they got all this data and they got these young people, creative people working out mm -hmm. algorithms. And the idea is they're gonna change your mind. Yes. And they know you well enough to know what appeals to you. So for example, and I don't know if I have this right, but if you were on the left side of the political equation, mm -hmm. they wanted to make you hate the right side. Right. Easy enough, stir up the divisiveness. Mm -hmm. which we have plenty of in this country today. And it's not only the acts by the president, it's, it's all that information that's thrown right. at us. And if you're on the right side, you know, well, they'll help you hate the left side. Right. Divisiveness, this is not good for democracy. Because no. then you don't talk to each other and you, you don't make compromises and all that. And then there's the middle, and that's the most interesting part of all. Now, those are the algorithms. They're trying to influence you one way or the other. That's and right. these days, what's happened is they've influenced us to the right. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the moderate middle becomes less moderate yep. and more mm, upright. Right. I mean, more uh, conservative. That's the, yeah, the more, more conservative yeah. and uh, ultra right. Mm -hmm. but, and so th this is very troubling because A, it happened. We know now that it happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mother didn't fool around, he found out. Right. Um, B, it's happening now. Mm -hmm. And C, it's going to happen in this coming election. Yes. So critical to the future of the country. Right. right. What do we do? What do we do? And there's a couple things you can do. You can try to keep your own data safe. Um, that would skew the information that they send you. Um, I would be aware of anything that they say based on your preferences, based on your past activity. Here's the information you, we think you would like. Because that's them telling you what you should do and what you should read. Um, you, you should decide for yourself what you should be, not based on their algorithm. If you're not going to think on your own, there's an algorithm that will think for you. And that's what they're hoping will happen is, we're so lazy, we like being spoon-fed, our algorithm will tell you what, you what you should be reading. And that way you're making the decision that they want you to make based on the information they give you. But that's not the way we should be making our decisions. So how, what, do I, what am I looking for? I mean, what are the, the badges of uh, email, for example, or social media, which is trying to change my mind mm -hmm. in an inappropriate way. What distinguishes it from other things? So much. You uh, there's, know, there's hundreds is. of emails every day. There's, you know. there's tons of emails every day. Um, I would not open up any emails that I didn't know who the sender was. And even so, you can spoof the sender. So are you expecting an email on this or that? Yes or no? 
you're not expecting the email, then it could be suspicious to, to open that email. Because that may also put malware on your machine, which then, of course, increases the chance of you getting misinformation. Yeah, right. The malware, so, they right. can sort of bounce it off your own mm -hmm. machine that way. Exactly. And they can also use your machine to send it along to others. To send it to others, yep. So you, you become part of the network, uh, right. their network. Right. Well, um, okay, uh, you know, if you get an email, I mean, there was some of this in the movie, if you get mm -hmm. an email that's, that's bashing Hillary Clinton, and it's saying things about her that you haven't heard before, right. uh, then you really got to question that, even if it seems to come mm -hmm. from a valid source. Right. How do you trust that? Right? I mean, it's, it's, I, I like to call it digital mudslinging. In the past, the candidates would, you know, fling mud. They would just basically say bad things about the, their opponent, whether it was true or not. Now it's all digital, and we get it in the form of email. We get it on our websites. And we get it in the pop-up ads, things like that. It's even on TV. You know, they sure. Mean, they're just trying to get you to distrust the candidate that you would prefer right. and trust our candidate, the candidate we want. Right. Now, you know, there's a, there's a history of this sort of thing in American right. politics. And even in Hawaii, there's a thing called a hit piece. Mm -hmm. And the hit piece just, uh, you know, it's, it's really um, exaggerated, and it just spends all its time hitting on the, you know, the, right. the opponent. Um, and I think, you know, in Hawaii, most people don't like it. Right. They see it for what it is. They know that it's, mm -hmm. not, that it's not kosher. It's not an opponent. Right. Um, and so you can, you can see that one coming. I suggest to you, Steve, going forward, these kids, you know, the, the graduates of, of uh, Cambridge Analytica, wherever mm -hmm. they may be in the world, could be anywhere, mm -hmm. um, they're more sophisticated, they're more nuanced. They know we are looking, waiting, right. watching for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not, they're not gonna be obvious, it's gonna be very subtle it's be now. very subtle. And you're not gonna be able to know what's fake news and what's real news. Yeah. So what you should believe. Off, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I, I want to make you Congress for a minute. Okay. Um, if, I, if, if Congress, you know, became functional somehow and became rational and being concerned about the welfare of the country, became concerned about the protection of our democracy, which is in great jeopardy, in my mm -hmm. opinion, and many people feel that way, um, what, what could, what should Congress do? You know, Mueller said, you guys got to do something. Yeah. He's not going to do it. He's going to only suggest we should do oh, it. Oh, yeah. What should Congress do now? What should Congress do now? I would definitely encourage them to take a good look at GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation that the EU has, and implement something like that in the U.S. So we could actually take control of our own data and say, you know what, I don't want Google to know all this stuff. Google, you know, have, have a way to... Uh, verify it's me requesting that my information be deleted, and then you got to get rid of it. And there's a hefty fine if you don't. They got to act. It's funny that yeah. um, that now we have um, you know another issue which has has been emphasized only in the past week about hate groups yeah. in the country, hate groups that live on the internet mm -hmm. uh, and that have special sites, special social media. Mm -hmm. arrangements uh, to stir them up and make them hate more. And this has got to be part of that same legislation, don't you yeah. think? How do we deal with them now? It's not only divisive, it's hate. It's also yeah. the extreme of divisive. Right. And, and, then, and then they say, well, gun control has to be in place. Well, you don't worry too much about the hate groups going on, but they're becoming extreme in their violence, too, offline, and that's where the guns come in. So... What's the root cause? What is the root cause of all of this going on? And part of it, I think, is the internet is not regulated. Anybody can say anything they want on the internet. We have to be very careful about what we consume. Well, yeah, that, that's a very interesting statement from a guy like you, and it would be from me mm -hmm. too, because uh, I have always believed in the internet as freedom, right. as global freedom of, exactly. of speech and expression, and yet it has taken a turn. Mm -hmm. It has become negative, it has been weaponized, mm -hmm. um, and where before I would have said, no, it's got to be free as, a, free as a bird. Right. I don't say that anymore. I right. think that there must be control, 
because it's a, it's a balancing of considerations. Right. One of the considerations is hate. Another is inappropriate influence on voters. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to control the internet. That's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I would, I'm not sure I would want to control the internet. I would like to regulate it a little bit. Um, it's kind of like electricity. It's, it's becoming a public utility. Yes. Um, when I Somebody get, said that. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren said that. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Yeah. Um, I think the internet is a great source of information, but you need to validate that that information is correct, which means you have to do the work to go to the source of where the internet is telling you what it was. I tell my students, you can write me any paper you want. Do not cite Wikipedia as your source. In the site Wikipedia, you go and you look at the sources that Wikipedia used and go to the original source. And that's what I want to happen, is I want to be able to go on the internet and get to the original source, no matter what. So I can yeah. verify that the information is correct. But doesn't it require um, non-profits, I mean, sort of NGOs, uh, cause organizations mm -hmm. in the country to come back those corporations you right. talked about, and government and, you know, hate groups mm -hmm. that are weaponizing the uh, internet. Um, it, it needs a, a countervailing force right. in the conversation. Does that force exist now? Or do we want to encourage that force to grow organically? I, I think we need to encourage that force to grow organically. Who is it going to be done by? I don't know. Somebody with very deep pockets, though, is yeah. going to take a lot of money to on that, what's going on. That would be um, a, you know, a great result if we had a cohesive, organized force. On the other hand, I would say that part of, part of the, um, the negative contributors mm -hmm. to the internet is the, is the power to divide the opposition. Right. Right. So if there was um, you know, a major effort to develop a sort of self-regulating, public regulation, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of the internet, there would be an attack on them. Oh, yeah. There would be attempts on those who, who believe in dealing with your opponents by dividing your opponents, mm -hmm. I mean, such as Russia does, yeah. not only in this country, but wherever it goes. Right. Um, so that group would have to be very determined. Yes. You think it should come from academia? Um, speaking as an academic, no. Okay. <laughs> um, speaking as somebody who's been in industry for 15 years before joining academia, um, you could possibly do that. Um, academics are kind of like Mueller. You should do something, but they will study the problem. But coming up with a solution is kind of tough in academia. Um, it is a good place to start because that's where the young people are. And we have their ideas. And you know, they're the future of the country. So I would like to get their input on it. And they're actually quite smart. So, yeah, they know. They know they, about this. They know all about it. In fact, yeah. they know more about it than a lot of older people. Do. Yeah. Me, for example. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're on the internet all You're also, uh, you know, suggesting that uh, the government is not the right one to do this. That regulation by the government is, uh, I mean, we, we saw the questions that those congressional committees were asking mm -hmm. uh, Zuckerberg, uh, yeah. you know, you know, Showing that they knew very little right, about right, right. They're not asking the correct questions. Yeah. We can't trust the government. We don't want the government to regulate no. this. No, we in, in a true democracy, I believe the government would not regulate this. Um, we, they can encourage. Um, they can set up fines if they don't do if they break the law. But currently, there's not very many laws in place or regulations in place. Yeah. You know, if we could get the GDPR, something like that here. Um, with hefty fines, but you know, Facebook got fined five billion dollars. It's like taking twenty bucks out of my my pocket, you know, yeah. and gives me an inconvenience for a week, but then it's okay. Yeah. Well, I so, started out today Steve, by asking you whether it was safe, and you said it wasn't safe. No, I think we totally agree right. on that. But now I want to ask you the, the closing question: mm -hmm. All the things we talked about, all the things that we touched on. <clears throat> Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Um, is this going to work, or are we going to be in an existential crisis? Uh, frankly, I think we're going to be in a, in a crisis. We're not moving fast enough to combat what's going on. People are still sharing too much on the internet. 
you should only share what you believe will be okay to make public. I mean, you don't put your bank account information on the back of a postcard and send it through the mail. But people will do that on email. Email is not any safer than the postal mail. So I think we're going to be hit with an existential crisis before we get this thing figured out and get it resolved, unfortunately. Oh, for the days of the Northwoods. <laughs> we're all in it, and we have to mm -hmm. live with it, and we better attend to it. Right. Well, thank you, Steve. Steve Larson. Great to talk to you again. Yeah. Appreciate it. Really enjoy that. Thank it's you so fun. much. You're